humbled to be here um, always that, um, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit has for us. And so, yeah, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we come before you and we just humble ourselves. We open up our hearts. We open up our ears. Father God, speak to us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. We say, have your way. That it is not about us, but it is all about you. That we do not put you in a box. We do not give you, tell you what to do or when to do, but have your way. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you in our hearts. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Open up our spiritual ears to hear what you have to say. And Father, as I come before you, use me as your instrument, dear Lord God. Let nothing that I say is from my flesh, but only what you want me to say. So Holy Spirit, take over, take charge. Speak through me. Father God, I humble myself before you. I thank you for the privilege and the honor of being here. And so, Lord, we seal everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone here on site, online. I mean, who's tired? Last one hour. I hate the, you know, the spring forward. I hate losing one hour. Like I love to sleep and I hate losing one hour of sleep. Just a thought last night when I remembered that, oh my God, I'm losing an hour. Already I start panicking. Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose. I, I didn't even lose anything yet, right? It's just like panic. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose one hour. You know, I got up this morning with this mindset that I'm already tired because I lost an hour. So, you know, I just put it in my head. I lost an hour's sleep. I better drink some coffee. You know, I don't drink coffee. But I decided I need to drink some because I'm sure I was going to be tired. And it was like taking medicine. I was like trying to drink it and I just couldn't. I'm like, no, why am I punishing myself? So here I am, Holy Spirit, fill me up. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so today we're talking about um, I, you know what, for me, when I have to like make my, I need Pastor Roy or something like every time I have to, you know, get, I ask the, I ask the Lord, what, what do I share? And then he'll give it to me. And then my next struggle is like, what do I, what's the title? What's the outline? And then when, you know, Pastor Albert says, what's your outline? I just panic even more. It's like, oh my gosh, I need to give him an outline. Like, you know, and so I'm not there yet. I just speak as the Holy Spirit tells me. Try to make outlines, you know, because we need outlines. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I was thinking about it, it, it just kept in my mind authentic Christianity, you know, an authentic Christian life. And, 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 a lot of times we know that people are talking about authentic Christian. I now find so many different things online, you know, podcasts, so many different things and different people and different platforms that's out there that is claiming to be, you know, Christians. And, and I listen to the Christian radio station. Like that's always in, in, you know, there's one on AM and one on FM, right? So... Um, I live up north, so I, I use the 100.3, right? But by the time I start heading south, you know, it doesn't work anymore. And so I, I got to go in AM and go to Joy 1250, right? And so sometimes you hear things and you hear people on there and you figure, if you're not a Christian and you hear these things, how do you know what's true, right? Because it, it's a Christian radio station, so you're thinking that everything on there should be Christian. Everything on there should be right. And, and then I realized not everything on there, like you still have to filter as much as you're listening to the Christian radio station, you still need to filter what you're hearing, who you're listening to. And, you know, and, and so I, I got led to the book of Jude. 
And, you know, I was reading, and, and you know, as you know, Jude is the half-brother of Jesus, as Catholics would deny that, that Jesus didn't have any brothers. But Jude is the half-brother of Jesus. And, and, and so in the book of Jude, it's, it's just one chapter, but he has like 25 verses, right? And, and his intention, his original intention was to encourage them and talk about salvation. But then the Holy Spirit, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, sometimes you plan one thing, the Holy Spirit leads you into something else, right? And so, of course, the Holy Spirit knows what's going on, knows what we need, because he wasn't even speaking to a particular set of people. It's not like, oh, yeah, he was talking to the Jews or the Gentiles. You know, he's talking to all of us, right, as Christians, saying that we should be aware, we should be on guard of false teaching, right? And all the things that's going on. And so I'm thinking, I'm reading through this, and I'm wondering, like, how do we know when it's false teaching? How do you know if, I mean, I'm listening to the Christian station. It should be good teaching. How do I know what is false teaching that's on there, you know? And so as we go through, you, you will see when he tells us and he described the false teachers and how it comes in and what we as Christians need to do so that we're not deceived. Amen? Because, you know, as we go through all of the, you know, all the things and, you know, especially now, nowadays, young people are looking for something to identify themselves with. You're looking for something. It's not like before, you know, when, when I was growing up, um, my, my, my parents, I, I lived with my, my dad and my stepmom. And, and just because I'm an only child, this is the only reason why I, I moved, right? So I, I'm an only child for my mom. And so, my, so where my mom lives, there's no kids. So I used to go and visit my dad and, you know, he lives in a, like a cul-de-sac and kids are on the street. So me as a kid decided that I'm moving because I need kids to play with, right? So I moved and I, I was living with my dad and my stepmom. And, and, and it was like, and I think that's where I, I became an Anglican because that's where she went. So that's where I went. So my dad dropped us off. And at that time, you could just go there. Whatever they tell you to do, that's what you do. You never question it. You never ask, why is this? Why is that? You just went along. But now I find that, you know, me having young people as children, I mean, young people, they don't just go along with what you say. And, and, and in my you know, old West Indian mind, I'm thinking like, I'm the mother. You should just listen to me, right? But it's not like that. They don't just listen. They're looking for something. They're asking. They need an explanation. And so, you know, when we look into all the things, we just went along with it. But now they're looking for something. And where are you going to find it? I just want to encourage the young people and everybody that's here. When you're looking for something, it is not on the Christian station, right? It is in the word of God that we have to go and that's where we have to find the truth. Because not because people say they're Christians, not because they carry a label, doesn't mean that's the truth. And it's in the word of God. And so that's what Jude was talking about, was trying to tell them. And so in the, in the first two verses of Jude, it says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to those who have been called, who were loved in, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be uh, yours in abundance. So we see that he's speaking. He, here he is. He's just telling who he is. This is who I am. And, and, you know, and, and here we go. This is it. And this was his intention. He started, he started with his intention to say, you know, we're going to talk about salvation. This is, this is my plan. But then it switched and he starts talking about false teaching. 
And then even when I look into, you know, like in, in, in Second Peter, he's talking about the same things too. So it, it's like, yeah, like the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, wake up. Don't tell them about salvation. They don't need to know about salvation. They need to know about what's really going on. And it's about these false teachers that's getting infiltrated in the church, into our Christian lives, that we need to realize who they are. Right? And that's what he's talking. So, you know, we have to be prepared. It's, a, you know, my first point I don't even know if these are points. I, like I said, I don't know how to read points and stuff. I, I just, I think about it like it's an art what Pastor Roy does. It's like, blows my mind and it, it, it makes me even more anxious when I'm trying to like, where is there like an all A's for all this? <laughs> you know, you go there like, give me another word for this. <laughs> that starts with A because I need it all to be A. Right. But, you know, but the, the verse three to four is talking about the false prophet. So, I mean, I decided to make this part, this point, be, you know, be ready to fight for your faith from false teaching. Right. And so um, verses uh, three to four says, it says, dear friends, although I was very eager to write you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to, co to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For, certainly individual, for certain individuals whom condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of of our, of our God into the license of immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign Lord. We have to fight. We have to contend. It says contend for your faith. We have to fight for our faith because now it's like anything goes. And how do you know what to fight for? Because, I mean, remember... The devil, like, I don't get impressed when somebody comes in and they can quote scriptures. Because if their life don't add up and don't align with it, they don't impress me. You know why? Because the devil knows scripture too. Right? And the devil had the audacity to even quote it to Jesus. And so if Jesus didn't know the word, he would have just fell for what Satan said. And so it's the same thing with us. If, what are you going to contend for? What's the faith that you're going to contend for? Because if you don't know what you're fighting for, you'll realize that, you know, my gosh, all this time I've been fighting for the wrong thing. Because this isn't true. I've been contending. What are you can? It says contend. You know, you, we have to contend for our faith. Our faith is the truth. It is the word of God. In Ephesians, it talks about our faith, you know, it, which is the word. When it talks about the, she, you know, it talks about our shield of faith, right? When you're talking about the armor of God and it talks about the shield of faith. And so we have to take on as Christians, you know, God gives us the truth. And, and our duty as Christians is that we fight for the truth. But you can't fight for the truth if you don't read your Bible and you don't know the truth. And so you need to know the truth. Because easily we, the, the false prophet comes in and it says that they pervert the truth. They tell you half truth. Half truth is not really true. Right? It's still a lie. And so if, you, if it sounds good... You know, doesn't mean that it's really good. It doesn't mean that it's the truth because it sounds good. And that's what I find that a lot of people are going, you know, here, there, everywhere. Like every time I listen, there's like some new place pop up. You know, like those pop-up shops. We got like pop-up churches. They're not even under any umbrella. They just come out and they sound good and they're excited and they draw a crowd. And it don't even last. Like it, 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 it's so sad that even sometimes our own young people, our own children fall for it. 
you know, because they, the excitement is there and then they go and it doesn't even last long because it's not even the truth. Like how long can you hold a crowd with false teaching? Because eventually God, he loves us so much that he's going to reveal it to us. We have to fight. We have to, we have to fight and contend for our faith, the truth of God. Because as these false teachers come in, like it doesn't come in and, you know, it seems, oh yeah, hey, I'm false. I'm going to be teaching you something wrong today. You know, it just sneaks in. Come along and sit down beside you. Worship with you. Look like you. Sound like you. And then you start hearing different things. And then it put doubt in your mind. And we're going to get there too. We're going to get there, right? Getting ahead of myself, too excited. But, you know, in Romans 6, 15, it says that, it says, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can still go on sinning? It says, of course not. Not because of grace, not because there's a grace, not because we can go and say to God, I'm sorry, forgive me, mean that you go on sinning over and over again and just keep saying, I'm sorry. Because think about us as individuals. Like I know for me, you know, as a mother, every time my child come and tell me, oh, mom, I'm sorry. I'm like, do you even know what sorry means at this point? Like, you know, like if you're really sorry, you don't do it again. It's like next time again and next time again. And, and so imagine if God was like us. I'm just like, oh, here you go again. You're sorry. Like, let's just wipe you out and make somebody new. You know, like, can you imagine? I, I, I said, I, I always say, imagine if it's like back then, you know. Remember and the story of Ananias and Sapphira? They, they go and they lie and just they die. How many people at the beginning, you know, lots at the beginning of the service, by the time the end of the service, how many is left? I mean, well, might as well have to just, you know, along we have CLC funeral home or something attached to it because we'll be burying everybody if God was like that, right? But be, not because we have the grace of God doesn't mean that we continue. And so that's what he's saying is that we don't continue sinning. We don't continue to do these things because of the grace of God. You know, Jesus said that he is, he wants to be Lord of our lives. And if somebody is a Lord of your life, that means that that person controls your life. You submit to that person. You submit to Jesus Christ. And so that's what he wants us to do. None of us are perfect. And I'm not saying that we won't mess up. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we're perfect and, oh, my gosh, oh, you, were, oh, you messed up. Oh, my gosh. Like, that's not what I'm saying. We will mess up. We will screw up. And that's why his grace is there. But when you intentionally go in and says, well, yeah, I'm just going to do this because, yeah, he'll just forgive me. I just go and ask him later. And that's different because now we're taking advantage of his grace. You know, it talks about the judgment that these false teachers will get. You know, in, in verse seven, 5 to 7, it says, though you already know all this, I want to remind you, the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their position of authority, but abandoned their, their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on that great day. In similar and in, in a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They, they serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. 
Imagine he, he loves us so much that he's saying, I'm just reminding you, like, just remember, you know, you know, when we tell our kids something and we just want to, you know, we don't want to be nagging. Hey, do this. We say, oh, I'm just reminding you. Right. Just like a simple reminder. I'm just reminding you, you know, make sure your light is shining. Make sure you know that whatever you're doing pleases God, not me. You know, he's warning us. And, you know, I, 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 we have heard a lot of times when, you know, because he's talking about, yeah, look, it, in, in Egypt, when, when they, even though he brought them out of Egypt, they were just there complaining and complaining and just going on and on and on and on and keep forgetting the grace of God. And how many of them, not a, they all died off and the younger generation is what went into the promised land. So it's not like, oh yeah, well, he took us out, so no matter if we complain or whatever we do, then we can still go in. He says, no. He's reminding, he says, no, he didn't do that. He still says, you know what? You're no, you don't deserve to get into the promised land. Because when you go in there, you're going to be like these false prophets. You're going to go in there, you're going to cause problems. He's sovereign. And, and when we look at it and when we see that even when he talks about, you know, when he, you know, the darkness, that, that even the angels, he created them, but they were doomed to darkness because they didn't do what was right. And so no matter where we are, these false prophets, he's saying that these are the things God will still judge them and there's still judgment for them. No matter, oh yeah, maybe they start off good. There's no sin that's going to go unpunished. No sin is going to go unpunished. We have to realize that he's a sovereign God and he cannot stand sin. And so we see that these false prophets, just the same way how, you know, the Sodom and Gomorrah was, um, you know, it was, you know, eternal fire that it went through. It's the same thing because if we, what they're doing is they're perverting. Yeah, it talks about that sexual sin, but it's talking about that same perversion that comes into the church. Judgment is inevitable for the false teachers. The one that comes in and tell you, it's okay to be a little bit promiscuous. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's how you feel? It's okay. And so there's a lot of churches that just want to be filled their seats. So they tell you it's okay if you're doing it and it doesn't hurt anybody. It's all right. You can do it. But that's not what the word of God says. It says that we are still responsible for what we know. That not because God's grace is there doesn't mean that you continue doing what you're doing. They were still doomed. Why would you want to go through, you know, as you go through the, the why you come and you accept Jesus and you go through all that for the end of the day, not for you to go in front of this guy and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. That's our, that's our ultimate goal. But once you go in and it's not like, oh, I accept Jesus. I can sit and do whatever and that's it for me. I'm done. Full stop. No. We have to daily continue. And as it even says in the previous verses, we have to contend for the truth. We have to continue knowing the truth. We have to continue reading the word. We have to continue hearing the instruction. That God has for us. What was the state of these prophets? We see it here. When it talks about, it says in, in verse 8 to 16, it says, In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people polluted their own bodies, rejecting authority and heaping abuse on celestial beings. 
But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him to slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do, whatever they do not understand. And, and the very thing they do understand by they do understand by instinct as irrational a animals do will destroy sorry let's go again yet these people slander whatever they do not understand and the very thing they do understand by instinct as irrational animals do will destroy them woe to them woe to them Woe to them is a strong thing. That is like a really strong rebuke. It says that they have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into ba Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. Imagine, we'll just stop there, like, Cain was such a jealous guy that he decided that I'm going to kill my brother because I'm just jealous of him that he's pleasing God and I don't decide to step up and please God too. So let me just kill this guy. Let me just get rid of him because he's my competition. He's showing me up. Because Cain disobeyed, and that's what he's, he's referring, that's what he's comparing these pro false prophets as. A disobedient, jealous killer. You know, even when he says that with Balaam, when they, they all start worshiping um, Balaam, he, you know, he, he was the one that kept pulling God's people. So that they can come and worship the God Baal. And that's what these false prophets come in and that's what they do. They come in and they deceive you to start believing something other than what the word of God says. They come in and they put all these different things, doubt in your mind. Because I think doubt is the killer of our faith. Because, you know, you, you, I mean, I look at, I look at, I see some, you know, some babies be, until when they don't even realize the danger of something, you should see the things they do until they realize. I remember one time when my kids were young, we went to, I took them to the CN Tower and, and, um, you know, the glass floor that's up there, right? So they're there and they're running around and they, they're gone over into the glass floor. And like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like how am I going to get them from over there? Because I'm not going on there, you know, and they're over there jumping and everybody there jumping on there and they're going on and, you know, and doing all this stuff. And I'm like calling them like, come baby, please come. And I'm now on my knees because I can't, I can't walk over there, you know, to get them because I'm so terrified you know, and so they're there and they're jumping and they're looking and the minute they look down and realize it's, oh my gosh, it's like way down. There's no floor here. They're stuck. They're like, and they couldn't move and I'm not going there to get them. Sometimes as Christians, that's what happened. You know, we're going, 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 and somebody comes and bring it, and then we get stuck. Like, what do we do now? What is the truth? And a lot of times as Christians, we don't even try and find the truth for ourselves. We're going and we're Googling it. What is this? Right? They Google it. They're going on all these different, oh, let me check what this podcast is saying. Let me check. And they, they, the manual, we got a manual, right? 
But I know some guys that don't read the manual. Try to fix things. Is it just guys or girls do that too? Do girls just ignore the manual? Who ignores the manual? Hands up. I'm going to show. I want to see. Who ignore the manual and try fix things? John T., really? I'm calling you out. I told you I was going to call you out. I haven't called you a long time. I haven't picked on you. My favorite. One of my favorite. You're all my favorites. He's just one of my favorite. It drives me crazy when you don't read the manual and think that there's extra parts. Not calling any names. <laughs> Not calling any names at all that thinks that they always give us extra stuff. Like who gives us extra stuff? You're missing something if you're getting extra stuff, right? We got a manual for a reason. So, see like how you like to not read those manuals? Get the word of God. That manual tells us everything. It talks about, and you know, I, I, I talk about before about, you know, who we are. That in the first book of the, the Bible, in the first chapter, it tells us who we are. But in between... That, after telling us who we are, it tells us how to live. It tells us all the steps of how you need to put everything together. There's no extra parts. You know how, as if you read the manual, you read the word of God. So when you start getting somebody telling you that, you know, the, you have three legs on a chair instead of four Instead of trying to maneuver it, thinking it's like a new design, you think about, let me read the manual and see if it's really three legs and it's not four. And so it's the same thing with, the, with, with our Christian walk. When a false prophet, when somebody comes in and tells you something, check it in the manual. See if that's how it goes. Because they're deceitful. And the same way when, when, when Baal was calling and pulling away, you know, the, 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 the children. And, and even it talks about Korah, that Korah was the one that rebelled against Moses and Aaron. You guys remember that guy? The one that the earth opened up and took him in? You know? He's rebelling. He, he was rebelling against Aaron's leadership, right? And so sometimes these false teachers will come into the church and start questioning your leaders and start finding fault of your leaders and then have you start thinking, yeah, well, why, why are they telling us we should come to prayer on Wednesday? I mean, like... I, I could go work or I could go do something else, right? And so these false prophets come in and try to bring rebellion, try to bring disobedience to your leaders. And that's how they start, that's how they infiltrate the church. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing people start acting differently, because of the lies that someone planted about the next person, about your life group leader, about your community group leader, about the pastor, about somebody that's been walking with you. And then you're thinking like, who do they think they are to tell me? But it's, the, it's what the word of God says. If they're aligning your life back to the word of God, then that's what you listen to. Because these false prophet comes in and drop little seeds of doubt, lies. That we start believing it and start pulling away from what God wants us to do is to push back the spirit of darkness. They start finding all kind of faults. Oh, they're doing it like that? Well, you know, the place that I used to be, you know, they don't do it like this. Maybe you should come visit our place because, you know, we don't do it like that. 
And then you go and you thought, oh, yeah, they're pretty cool. They do this and they do that and they, you know. But these are the fault finders, the ones that come in, the false teachers that come in and they stand up against what the word of God says. And that's what it says here. It talks about, when it talks about them, it says that these people, verse 12, it says these people are blemished at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They really don't care about us. They don't care about you. The enemy doesn't care about you. You know, Pastor Roy always says that sin will take you farther than you really want to go. The devil doesn't, it's not, oh yeah, he really likes me. No. He's only enticing you so that he can take you to where you want to go and abandon you and leave you there. They don't care about you. That's what these false prophets, they don't, I mean, if your leaders are calling you and they're aligning your life to the word of God and they're following up on you and they're finding out, are you okay and we're here and we're praying with you? Don't use those things to say, why are they in my life? Look at it and say, thank God that you put leaders like this in my life. Because these are leaders that are selfless. These false prophets, they don't worry about the sheep. It says they're like clouds without rain. They blow along. And, and I love how every time he gives all these things, you know, he, how he explains it and he, he gives this metaphor. He says that they're like clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They're like waves of the sea, foamed up with shame. Wandering stars for whom blackness, darkness has been reserved forever. Have you ever been into like Niagara Falls and you look down where the boat is? And you see that net, you know, like the foam? It's like some nasty thing there. You're like wondering like, where's that dirty thing? Like it comes up like over there is nice, but like right here, all that nasty foam that comes up over there, right? And he's saying that they're useless. These false teachers are useless. What is the use of a cloud with no rain? What is the use of a tree that doesn't bloom and bear anything? And it's a fruit tree. I mean, I'm not talking about just an evergreen tree. I'm talking about you're a fruit tree that's supposed to bear fruit. And so we are called to bear fruit. Right? But it's, it's explaining and it's saying that these are the false teachers that come in. This is who they are. They don't, they don't have any fruit. And that's why I said sometimes when you see... Uh, uh, you know, those pop-up shops, pop-up churches, they come and they just last for a little while. See, they're not bearing any fruit. They don't even really care about the people. It's just like, oh, yeah, maybe somebody told them that those young people, they're on fire and they, we need them. And you know what? They'll do whatever you want. So they're there for a while until they come to their senses. And then they're not there anymore. Then they'll pop up somewhere else. And they'll go to the nearest person that doesn't know the word of God. But not in this church, right? Amen? Oh, I thought only some of you. Are you guys sleeping? Like, you, even though you've got an hour and you lost an hour, your, your celebration is at 3 o'clock. Come on, you should have been woken up at 2 o'clock. It's, it's 2 o'clock. What time is it now? That's the real time. Like, not, you know, the fake time. Or the real time, but it's still afternoon. So wake up. It says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesy about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of, the, of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness 
and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others of their own advantage. These people, you know, sometimes we, we find these teachers and, and they're supposed to be shepherds and they talk about, you know, uh, and I have nothing about, you know, the, the prosperity, preaching about the prosperity and all of that stuff. Because, I mean, if we are children of God, he wants us to prosper. And so I have nothing, that, uh, you know, against that. But when you're, you, you're going to go up there and you're going to preach and you're going to boast about what you can do and all the stuff that you have that your congregation don't have because, I mean, the blessing should flow from the head down into the congregation, right? So if, if I am being blessed, then automatically my followers should be blessed. My sheep should be blessed. Because as the shepherd that knows where the good grass is, I'm not just going to go over there by myself and leave my sheep in the drought and go fill up over there and then come back and stand, right? You're going to bring your sheep into the good green pastures. And so you are the one that is going to give them. They're the ones, when you speak, when they speak, they should be feeding their sheep. And so it is not like one of those excitement, oh, yeah, 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 it's like this. And you get all excited and then you go home and you get deflated and you got to wait until Sunday again to get pumped up again because, you know, the excitement is only in that four walls because there's no real food. You're not getting the word of God and even when you get the word on a Sunday, it is your job and your duty as a child of God to go home and go through it again. You know, like, is it the cow that just like brings up that stuff, chewing it, and then swallow again, then brings it up again? I mean, to us, it sounds like, ugh, that's gross, right? But God wants us to do that with the word. With the word of God. That we don't just take it, swallow it down, and that's it. Because when you just take it and just swallow it down like that, sometimes you get choke on it. You got to bite it off a little. Chew on it. Meditate on it. How can I put that into my life? How can I align it with what's going on in my life? How can I look and see what the word of God is saying in my life? And so even though Jude talks about all of this, the false teachings, what they're like, he's just saying, I'm just telling you what to look up for. Because this is what, if you're getting all of this, if it's just the excitement and you're not getting fed and you're not aligning what they're preaching and what they're teaching is not aligned to the word of God. He's saying that something is wrong. But he didn't just leave us there and say, hey man, I'm, the, I'm Jude. I'm just telling you there's false prophet out there. Goodbye. Right? He didn't do that. He talks about, he reminds us what the apostles said. And so he's saying that, yes, this is what happened when these false teachers come in. This is how you recognize the false teachers. But then what's next? It's a call to remain faithful. The apostles warning in verse 17 to 19, it says, but, dear friends, right? I mean, Pastor Ross said something about that but, you know, like, but. It's like, okay, but there's means something up top. So he's telling you about something up there, which is a false teaching. So, yes, there's these false teachers and all of that stuff. But, dear friends, remember what the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said, they said to you, in the last days... 
there will be scuffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instinct and do what do and do not have the spirit. The Bible talks about that, what's going to happen in the last days. You know, it talks about, I mean, is anyone ever like you're sleeping or something and someone comes and they pull something at you, like tickle your ear or something, have a feather. I mean, they don't have feathers here much. But in Jamaica, there's like chickens running around in the yard. There's always feather. So, and, 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 and in, in, they have a, uh, it, well, I don't know, it's a Jamaican thing. So if their ears is itchy, they, they get the feather and they're like this. And, and it tickles your ear, you know. Um, if it's itchy, so you go like that and it tickles your ear and it feels all good. It's like, ah, right? Sometimes that's the preaching that we want. We want that feel good tickle, kind of, yay, you know, tickle kind of. Right? And that's what in the last days, that's what they're saying. That's what's going to happen. That you don't want to hear the truth. You're not going to want to hear the truth. You're not going to want to hear that, you know, sexual immorality is wrong. Shacking up is wrong. Living in is wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. God help me when I say all these things. <laughs> I'm never politically correct. But that's what the word says. And I'm not going to compromise on what the word says. And you yourself know whatever you're doing is wrong. Because it, you just have this kind of feeling that it just brings you. You know that what you're doing, it, it, it's like you're, you're down. Because you know that this is not where I'm supposed to be. You know, like something is off. Right? And so sometimes... We, when, when people are telling you that stuff and saying, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, like it's okay to work, but you're also supposed to, you know, the Bible says not just for you to go and work and gain wealth for yourself, but you need to go out and you need to preach the gospel. You need to go out and you need, I mean, we're going to get down there too, but he talks about, you know, what we're going to do with the ones that are lost, but where it's not just for you. So when they're, you know, when they're saying to you, like, you need to tithe. Like, I mean, we're not, I'm not talking about tithe, but I have to say this. You see, that's why, I, I, when is the next time I'm here? I think I have, they won't, for, I'll tell you this, but you won't remember when they sit back, maybe in, the, in June. You know, every time I look, this is the second week. Last week at your SOCAM, I looked at your tides and I see, you know, this is your weekly budget. And then when I look at your tides, I see it's like in a negative. And I think about it and I say, you are blessed people. You are prosperous people. Why is your tides in a negative? Why are you guys not giving? And I mean, it's ouch to whoever is not. You don't have to say ouch out loud, but you know on the inside that you're not giving. You know what 10% is of your income. And so we get blessed so that we can be a channel of blessing. And, and, and you know, how do you think that you can sit here Use the paper, use the toilet paper, use the light, all this stuff without paying. I mean, when you go to the movie theater, you pay for all sorts of stuff, even to pump the oil and the popcorn, they ask us to pay. Or the butter. Well, sprinkle everything. You got to pay for this, pay for that. And we do it because it's a pleasure. But then you come to church and it's like you skimp. It's like you want the popcorn. You want the combo with the extra butter. You even want chocolate. And you want the big jumbo diet coke or whatever you drink. But you don't want to pay. And so I'm just saying. If you want to be blessed more. Because you may think, oh yeah, well, I'm blessed now. Right? 
But I mean, not even just financially bless, financial blessing, but if you want to be blessed in your health, you want to be blessed with all these things, you guys need to give. And I mean, not because we're doing it on the app now that nobody sees you walk up, because I think sometimes people are giving because everybody's looking if they didn't get up to come through <laughs> Now it's the app, so nobody knows if you're giving or not. But God knows if you're not giving. Remember, God knows your 10%, what it's supposed to be. And I know you guys went through an encounter, so that should have broke. Like, I should have seen this week, like, it should have been, like, get to your, like, I think you're at, like, one-third. Is that, am I right, Pastor Albert? It's like one-third of your budget, Right? So I'm sorry this is not the tickle the ear kind of message that you want to hear. But I'm just saying that if you're in this house, you're a child of God, you belong into this house, you sow into the house. You give. And you don't give out of obligation and all of that. You give because you love. You give because you want us to prosper. You want to prosper. You want the congregation to prosper. You want to be able to go out and touch, you know, the, 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 the city of Scarborough and even the surrounding areas. But sometimes we don't even want to, I mean, they, don't, they you skimp on your, your tithe, your money. You skimp on your time. You just give the offering of your time too. Like, okay, yep, I got to be at church and yeah, I may be serving this Sunday, so I'm coming just for this. But anything extra, they better not ask me to do anything extra. Right? Anyway. Sorry. Steered off. Sorry. I mean, I still want you guys to hug me when I come, okay? Visit you. Just still be happy to see me. But these are the people, it's saying that we have to be, it's not all about what we want for our own advantage. You know, it's not about just lovers of ourselves, but we have to see beyond. We have to love beyond. Not just our mere instinct of you know, we have to be led by the Spirit. And the only way that we can be led by the Spirit is allowing the Holy Spirit to come and dwell inside of us. Because if we are led by the Spirit, then we won't be able to gratify the, the, our flesh. We need to build up our faith and keep God's love. Verse 20 to 21 says, But you, dear friends, here we go again with this but. But you, dear friends, by building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. How do we get built up? This is, he's just saying that in order for you to realize and acknowledge the false prophet, we have to build ourselves up in the faith, in God's love. And how can we do that? It is by reading our Bibles, knowing the word. It's by praying. It's by spending time, having devotion time with God. That he's able to speak to us and reveal the, 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 the wolves that's in sheep clothing. The ones that is there deceiving us. That's pretending to be your friend, but is saying, hey, you don't have to go to prayer today. Let's go hang out and do this. Oh, you, oh, you got to go to church again? You guys, you guys were there the whole time. You were there on Wednesday, and then you were there on soaking night, and then you got to do this again. Like, let's go hang out here. And sometimes we don't realize that these, they're pulling us away 
from God. And so we have to spend time in the word of God. The Bible is, you know, uh, it says that the Bible is, is the one that shines through the darkness. The word of God shines through the darkness. It says the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And if you're in Sunday school, so help me God. Right? I mean, imagine walking through the darkness and you have a flashlight, but you never turn it on. You're going through the darkness and you're stumbling along. And all along, you have the light. As we go and we stumble along through this darkness, we have the light, which is the word of God, to shine and to show us the path that we should take. The only way that we're going to be able to do as it says, to keep yourself in God's love, it is for you to continue to contend for the faith, for you to continue to know the truth. It's for you to continue to speak the word of God through and over your life. Because if you know the truth of God, when somebody come and tell you that, you know, you're a duck, you know that you're not a duck, right? If they come and they tell you something that you're not, you can say, no, that's not who I am. Because that's not what the word of God says. It says that you are a child of the king. You are chosen. You know, at the end of the day, what we should be doing is having one of those, you know, like they have that inventory checklist in the encounter. We should have like an inventory list to check. How did my day go today? At the end of your day that you check and reflect, how did I do today? Because the only way that we're going to bring the correction and we're going to bring the change is if we realize where we, where we went wrong throughout the day. And when we spend time word of God because we can get up and go and do whatever and I know there's people that'll be sitting here you know and and everybody not everybody's gonna get what I said and not everybody gonna like what I said because maybe some of you thinking about the hour that you miss you're thinking about your hunger you know like I gotta go do something else I'm hungry I what am I gonna cook what am I gonna eat and you're thinking about all different type of things but what I'm encouraging you to do is that you spend time in the word of God and allow the word of God to illuminate you. Allow the word of God to show you your blind spot, to show you the false teachings that you have already embraced, that you don't even realize that you embraced. That's causing conflict in your spirit. We need to do a self-check, an inventory check every day and aligning ourselves back. Daily repentance, daily confession to the Lord. Because we have to have a humble heart. Because if we think that we're okay, that's pride and arrogance. Because none of us are perfectly okay. There's always something that we need to realign and we have to get back on track God's God gives us grace the grace that we need to make the hard choices you know he says I put before you life and death you just need to choose like we we know you know the truth it's there but he's not going to force you on the path. He's not going to force you down. He's going to say, you know what? You still got to choose. It's up to you. It's a choice. And then he talks about, and, and this is where I was saying that, you know, we're not just safe for ourselves. I'm okay. I'm saved and I'm good. Just sit here waiting for the Lord to come. Hallelujah. 
but it says here, you know, we have to help the unsaved through mercy and fear. In verse 22, 23, it says, be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothes stained by corrupted flesh. Our goal and our focus should not be on ourselves. We should shift it to the lost, to our friends, the one that's in doubt, the one that's there thinking, mm, I don't understand this, you know, because they're all, everybody I find, they're looking for an answer for something because they're lost. And we should be the one to have compassion on them that they will not be condemned. You know, we're called, you know, when it says that uh, hate even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh, it's just saying hate the wrong, hate the sin, but don't hate the person. And you know somebody's doing wrong, you know, it means that, you know, we don't say, mm -hmm, he's doing like this and I'm not going here like this. They're like that and they're bad company. I mean, yeah, we know that, that it says that bad company corrupts good character. And we're not saying, you know, I'm not saying go sit into the temptation and then pretend as if, oh, I'm sitting here to bring them, you know, you, and, you know, and in veil you're in there with them you're you're part and you're doing all the stuff with them because you're trying to witness to them i'm not talking about that don't be going and but what i'm saying is don't leave them up continue to share continue to to give them the truth continue to show them the light continue to show them love Continue to show them that, you know what, you're not condemned, you're not judged. Because as much as, yes, we know what they're doing doesn't line up with the word of God and it's wrong. But we're not the judge. All we have to do is show them the word of God. Because that's what it says here. It says that we have to be merciful to those who doubt. It says that we need to be the one to snatch them. You see them falling off. And you need to be the one to say, no, no, no. Come back up. Pull them up. Be a friend. Be the, that light into, into the darkness. Don't get consumed with the things that they're, they're getting. It says that we need to hate that. But we need to love the person because Jesus died for them too. Amen. We should be led by the spirit. And it's only when we spend time with God that we are, we are led by the spirit. And when we're led by the spirit, it allows us to know when to speak, when to say what to say. Allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Because maybe what's going to happen, we may say something that will offend them. But the Holy Spirit will give us that, the right words to say. The Holy Spirit will give us how we should say it. When's the right timing to say it? I mean, you ever been talking to like a friend that's been, it's, it, it, you know, you've been trying to witness to them. And they never want to hear it. They don't want to hear it, right? And then a time comes and, and it was like this perfect moment, but because you're so stuck of, they just don't want to hear it. So you're not, you're, you weren't ready for when they really, when they were really ready and you leave and you're like, oh my God, that was like a perfect opportunity, but I missed it, right? Like I, I get those times. I get those times when I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have said something at this time, you know? And it's like, oh my gosh. And so I, I keep praying. I said, Lord, give me that discerning spirit. That I know when I'm supposed to say it. You know, just when I'm just supposed to say something. When I'm supposed to give somebody a hug. When I should just, just give them a smile. Because sometimes, you know, somebody, they're going through something. We don't know. But instead of turn away from them, show them love. 
Get that, have the Holy Spirit inside of you that you're able to discern when we're supposed to, because that's what it says. It says that in fear, we're supposed to discern what it is. And how we're going to do all these things? How are we going to, at the end, he's telling us, when he closes in this prayer, you know, when Jude ends with this prayer, he's saying, like, how are you going to really see, know the false prophets? How you're going to protect yourself from these false prophets? How you're going to be able to, 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 to share the word of God and snatch them out of the, 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 the eternal fire? He says in verse 24 to 25, it says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. That is how we're going to do it with the one, the King of King, the Lord of Lord, the one that will never leave us or forsake us. Lord Jesus Christ is the one that is able. He said that he's the one that is able to help you to stand against these false teaching. To him be the glory. That's how you're going to do it. It's with the help of God. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is all powerful. It says majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is the power that we have. And that is what we use to push back the spirit of darkness. To push back. And, and be aware and alert when you see the false teachers coming in. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's able to sustain us. The love that he shows us is that same love that he wants us to show to others. Just like a parent that cares for us. You know, our parents love us. As parents, we love our children and we do anything to, to get for, so that they will not stumble, that they will not fall. As much as possible, we always say we don't want them to make the same mistakes that we did. And so we remind them and we tell them that we're here and I'm here with you. I am here to help you. And that's what Jesus is saying. I am here with you. All he wants you to do, spend time with him. We get well-rounded, not just in the word of God, not just by these false teachers, but so many things, that spirit of disobedience. You know, when these false teachers come in and they bring disunity, Jesus is saying that I'm able to withstand, I'm able to stand with you, that you'll be able to overcome. All power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. All the glory goes to God. Everything belongs to him. And so as we close in prayer, I'll just ask you to just stand for a moment. And we just, you know, as we pray, we just close our eyes and we'll just close in prayer and ask the Lord to help us to, to be alert, to help us to be on guard, that we will not just be complacent, that we just allow false teaching, false prophet just to come into our lives, to bring division, to bring discord. But that the Holy Spirit will indwell in us and help us to recognize 
the false teachers and the false the false prophet that's around that we don't just want to hear the nice stuff but when your leaders are preaching and teaching you and correcting you with the word of God that you receive it because they love you so Father God as we bow our heads before you we thank you that you're such a merciful father that you're so powerful that all authority is given to you, our Lord and our King, the um, Almighty Father, ruler of heaven on earth and earth. We come before you and we submit our lives, our actions to you, Lord. Father God, I ask you right now to reveal to us for the, any spirit of disobedience that has been planted in our in our lives, has planted in our minds, our hearts, from false teaching. The Father God, even that the ones that are listening, that has walked away because their ears weren't tickled by what they want to hear. But Lord, that they will draw back to you. That we will have a heart and a burden for the lost. That Father God, that we will be the one to help them, to snatch them out from the, from the eternal fire. That Lord God, that we will not take grace for granted. That we will not continue doing what is wrong. And just by your grace, ask forgiveness. But no longer will we continue to sin against you. But that we're aware, we're alert. Open up our spiritual eyes, dear Lord God, that we're able to see. Help us to discern, Lord God, the lies, the plans, the plot and the scheme of the enemy. Because we know, dear Lord God, that the, the enemy just come to steal, to kill and to destroy but you come that we may have life and have life to the fullest. And so right now I release life. I release power. I release authority over this congregation, over your children, over your people. I release the spirit of obedience. I come against the spirit of disobedience. Father God, I pray for this congregation. I come against the spirit of lack. I come against the spirit of, me, of, of lack in this place. The, I break off the spirit of poverty. I release the spirit of abundance. I release the spirit of love. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every heart. That as you stretch every heart, as you get, as you move them, Lord God, to take new territories, Lord God. That Father God, that they will not be like the false prophet, that they grumble and complain. But Father God, that they will take on territories for you. I break off the spirit of mediocrity off of, off of the lives of your people. And I pray and I release the spirit of excellence over your people. I release the spirit of excellence. I break off the spirit of complacency. Father God, we thank you for reminding us. Thank you for showing us the truth. I pray, dear Lord God, and I ask forgiveness over the ones that, that hasn't been spending time in your word, that hasn't been spending time in devotion with you. We ask forgiveness. And as they turn to you, Father God, I pray that they will not... Stand away. They will not 
make shame or guilt keep them away from you. But Father God, that they will come to you. That they will spend time to know your heart. That they will spend time to discern what you want for them. Remove the lies of the enemy, Lord God, that has yoked itself upon your people. I ask you to break off the yoke of lies, of deception. In the name of Jesus, let them see the truth. That the truth will set them free. Father God, you are a personal God and you know each individual. And you know, Lord God, everything that they're struggling with. You know, dear Lord God, the things that they're going through. You know, dear Lord God, the areas that they're lacking in. And so, Lord, we're asking you, we know that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us. And so I'm asking for a reset. I'm asking for a new thing, a fresh start upon each and every lives. Father God, we thank you for reminding us of your word. Thank you for reminding us of your promises. Thanking you for your correction because you said that you correct the ones that you love. And so we thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord God, that truly you are our living hope. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord God, help us to be alert. Help us, dear Lord God, to be able to see in the spiritual realm for every deception, every false teaching. Help us, dear Lord God, in the last days that we will not be the ones that will fall away from your word. But we will be more vigilant, that we will contend for the faith, that we will fight for the truth, that we will fight for what we believe in, that we will fight for what the word of God says. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our hope, that we can hope in you. And so, Father, we just thank you. I pray that you touch every heart, every mind, every thought. Bring it captive to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we declare your word and your truth over this congregation. That everyone will leave this place blessed. That they will leave this place empowered. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. And so, Father, even the things that we haven't said, the things that you know, you said you know the things that we need, you know what, we're, what, we, what we're, we want to pray for before we even open up our mouth, you know us. And we're laying all these things at your feet. And we're giving it to you and we're saying, Lord, here we are. Have your way in our lives. That we're not holding back any area from you, but we're saying, have your way, Holy Spirit. Come and live in us. Come and dwell in us. And so, Father, all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Stacy. Indeed, you're such a blessing in our church.